the the numbering uh, for the requirements. Um, so I think um, we we kind of finished on about number seventeen, which is a mechanism is required to enable an LER and certain LERs to determine if the far end LER. LER can, can accept and process a packet containing a given ADI. So, did uh, Tarek have a comment that actually the ingress LSR could also process at least in some limited fashion? Yeah, but if you're inserting it in ingress, that's true, but if you're inserting it in ingress, Presumably, and and your it could be processed at ingress. You, you wouldn't be inserting it unless you could process it at ingress. Okay. Uh, somewhere, somewhere, maybe framework again. Yeah. Uh, one question uh, on this requirement number seventeen, uh, Matthew. Is uh, do I need to process? Do, uh, let's say I'm an LER, egress LER, that's going to dispose of the uh, uh, supposed to be disposing of the additional data that needs to be carried for the ADI. Um, do I need to be able to process it or just dispose of the data, meaning like from the packet? Um, is that the required? Need to be able to dispo, uh, to be uh, process the ADI, and keep in mind that uh, we are talking about multiple ADIs in one uh, blob of metadata. Uh, so I think there could be two requirements here. Um, I think one of them is a that, that we, we may need a mechanism to determine whether the egress can actually process it as well as dispose of it. Um, Wait a minute. Yes, just for, just for my understanding, are we talking about hop by hop or end to end? I guess end to end there must be processing. Mm. Good point. Yeah, I was thinking maybe hop by hop lower when I asked the okay. question. But you're right, for end to end, mm, likely they have to process it. That's the whole point, right? Oh yeah, that's the the idea, really. If you if you insert it at the egress and don't do anything, and then you just dump it at the I'm sorry, insert it at the ingress and dump it at the egress and don't do anything at any of that's just Yeah, no. I think that's that's kind of related a bit to fifteen though. Um I don't think we had a comment on fifteen. I don't I think fifteen Possibly needs to be split in that sense. In in it, it's because that's dealing with the, the the case of if you have hot by hot ancillary data, whether the um you know the the, the LSRs on the path, so i.e. the next hop or one of the other hops down the path. Um, part of that is can you can you dispose of it or um or process it? So I'm wondering if we don't need to split fifteen. Well, I mean, all of this is just saying that we need to design a mechanism to do this. It's not a, you know, it's not a nodal requirement at all. It's, it's simply we need a protocol to, to enable us to do this. Well, I, I, I think that uh, if we talk about uh, on the wire encoding, then uh, there cannot be guarantee that uh, either hop by hop or uh, egress uh, will process. Um, being able to parse it, skip over and dispose, I think that's uh, what should should be required. Well, it's it's like a capability. Yeah, capability, but that that's uh, for the control what, management plane. Why would you ever send a piece of data to a, a piece of end to end data to a node that couldn't process it? Uh, well, that's a good question, uh, but there might be like uh, introducing uh, new functionality and, for example, uh, sending some data over the multicast tree. So, uh, and that would be like a best effort. 
Um, well, well so uh, so maybe we need to slight change of wording, but the least you've got to do is to dispose of it. Yes, I agree. That's disposing is that's a must. And right. Not well, process is a, not dropping it is a must. Right. Process is a very broad term. Right. And I, I think you could argue that uh, accept and process is um, it could could go from anything from yeah all right so what I'm throwing it on I'm throwing that information on the floor to I'm going to do whatever service you want and. Uh, you for sure need to know that the that the packet's not going to get thrown on the floor. Otherwise, there's no point in sending it there. Yeah. No, the packet itself should not must not be thrown on the floor because of ancillary data, and ancillary right. data must be removed or disposed um, um, at the egress. Yes. Yeah. Well, I mean, it shouldn't even be thrown on the floor because of ancillary data indicator either. You don't want a non, an incapable LDR, it, unless they're choking on it. Yeah, I mean, it just seems sort of, you know, all the basics of VPN and pseudo-wire and uh, uh, sort of taught us this over the years, that you don't send a packet somewhere unless you're sure it can be dealt with. This is just basic capability sort of processing. Yeah, yeah, I mean, that's all we're trying to say here. So, we just need a, a a mechanism to support that. Yeah, can which can be it's it's really about capability advertisement here. So, um, which could include um, knowing you know by some sort of godlike process that um, um, that this is okay. But there there does need to be something in the network that says yeah it's okay to put this in and send it to someone else. Yeah, or a particular someone else. Yeah. And I think that's all we're trying to say here. That's fine. So I think we're, are we okay? Which one are we on? 17 still? 17, yeah. Yeah. I, I think Lois' comment, though, was LER isn't, I think Lois' comment, if I understood correctly, was LER isn't broad enough because of the hot by hot case. But then 15 also, 15 kind of covers. Yeah, yeah, we dealt with hop by hop separate from from end to end, didn't we? Yeah. So I think fourteen, fifteen were hop by hop, and sixteen, seventeen were end to end. Okay. Sixteen is hybrid, um, end to end, okay. and hop by hop. If someone wants to propose better text to us, we're more than happy to take it. But all we're trying to say is, um, don't waste everyone's time and bandwidth by putting stuff and confusing everyone by uh, putting stuff in a packet that means that the thing that's got to process the ultimate payload uh, is confused. Uh, so are we saying the hop by hop options must be processed by every hop along the path of the packet? Well. I think that's a design decision. So that's a, a, a network decision because maybe they wouldn't be. Um, but um, the, anyone who detects a hop by hop shouldn't choke on it. Well, aren't we saying, no, we're saying don't insert a hop by hop. We're not saying that, that, that a receiver must process it. We're saying that, that a, an ascender must not send it unless it knows the receiver can process it. Um, I think that that's a too um, strong um, constraint. Um, but, but that's exactly like how things like entropy label work. I mean, that's uh, the hub by hub, and I compare it to the discussion of six man uh, hub by hub uh, extension headers. Um, I would like us to uh, allow a transit LSR, LSR uh, to skip over. Um, Hop by hop options and just uh, pass the packet further. Okay. But it mustn't, we, we mustn't knowingly insert it if we think it's going to be not disposed of or ignored. This is, I mean, maybe we, maybe what we need 
is something a little bit more. Um, well, it certainly needs to be disposed of. If it's not going to be disposed of at the end, it's got no business being in the packet. But right. I, I, I think that what we're talking about now is that um, LSR action in response to hub by hub um, indicator. Yeah. So, so I, I we don't want a case. We we must have a mechanism that can be skipped over. Yes, and I, I think that that's uh, to do that. Um, the encoding on ancillary data um, has to be uh, defined. Now, hang on a second. A specific one can be skipped over, but you had better not uh, deliver uh, an ADI to someone who must process it because it's top of stack. We dealt with that elsewhere, uh, unless it understands what to do with it. But this is what I asked, Stuart. Disposition of it is one thing. Yep. And uh, processing or taking the action of it is another. Um, so, yeah, I, I think it was raised that this position is a must. All right. Um, but why would you send a... Um, are we talking hop by hop or end to end? Because I can't see why you would send it. Yeah, to yeah, a... yeah. It was made, uh, the point was made that it makes sense for hop by hop. So let's talk about hop by hop option. So, in the case of hop by hop, what you it it mustn't choke the LSR that got it. And if the uh, LSR cannot does not understand it but can dispose of it, then I think you need to determine whether that is a behaviour that you want and is acceptable to you, or whether it's a showstopper behaviour. Yes, so, I agree. So, right. so um, it's perfectly fine for a node to miss it, provided that the two ends of the network agree that it's okay to, to miss it. So, for example, if this was a, um, uh, a security test of all nodes passed and a node ignored it, then you would be unhappy with running yeah. that test over that path. And we were talking about, you know, that being an ADI uh, per action uh, kind of uh, property. Right. It's per right. action. Um, and fine. Okay. But uh, I think, yeah, maybe a little bit uh, clarification in text will help to distinguish the disposition versus processing. And that's what the trigger for that uh, discussion. I agree. And maybe that uh, number 17 is not is talking about them, the capability, as Matthew said, but there is an accept and process there, uh, two pieces. Yeah. So accept, I think what we meant here was don't throw the packet on the floor. Whether or not you actually process the ancillary data is a, is a second thing. But you, but you need to also make sure that the sending node knows that you are unable to process it if it puts it in there. Mm. Yeah. By, by yeah. omission. I think, or... I think that's true because of some of the because of the nature of some of the the ancillary data. You need to you definitely need to know. Um, but you need to know it's safe because some of it may be. If it's. I mean, you know, it may be that there's some applications where it's kind of optional to to process it, but in any case, you you want you don't you want to be sure that when you put it on a packet that contains user data as well, that it doesn't drop it, right? Because it doesn't understand ADIs. So, Matthew, are we getting down to saying that for hope by hope, the egress LER may only dispose of a uh, the ADI, but for a end, end to end. No, no, I don't think so. No, 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 no. Hop by hop's got to be out, uh, may well need to be processed by the end node. Yeah. So there's a, there's a catch all, for, I think, for end, end nodes, irrespective uh, I mean, of hop by hop or end yeah, to end. I mean, that's what I heard. So. so let's go up a level, right? Fundamentally, 
no packet should arrive at a node unless you know what that node is going to do with that packet. I think that should always be the case, shouldn't it? A packet is, is I mean, are you saying the, uh, there are many pieces inside the packet? So when you say packet, I don't know which piece you mean. A, a pack, if, 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 go right to the very top. Fundamentally, a packet should never arrive at a node and you not know what that node is going to do to it. Bring me a cup of coffee. Well, I, I, I think that that should not happen, but it might happen and the node will drop this packet. It's like you receive the packet with the label and you don't know the label, you just drop it. Yes, but you know that's what's going to happen. Well, yeah, you will find out mm. eventually. I think trying to avoid that kind of behavior where you mm. could send it. I mean, try, this is, you know, where we have capability signaling today in RSVP, mm. for example, for mm. entropy label. Um, it's exactly this, trying to avoid the case where you, you, um, you insert entropy label and then the foreign doesn't understand it and drops a packet. So that all we're trying to say here is, is, is something along those lines. But we need a similar kind of mechanism. Because how it's implemented, the, whether you do it in the control plane or do it by. Yeah, the scenario um, I consider is that um, if we have a path uh, that nodes support um, ancillary data indicators uh, and some set of uh, indicators and uh, ancillary data. Then uh, at some later point, a new um, actions and um, ancillary data introduced, and now we have a mix, for example, uh, part of the uh, nodes, uh, OSRs uh, on this path uh, support and path not. Um, I think it would be unfortunate if uh, that forces us to change the path and processing of the common set of um, indicators. So uh, I would prefer that our design allows the nodes that support um, indicators and a subset of ancillary data be able to process them and then skip over <clears throat> what they don't understand. Yeah, I, I agree with you. I think that's probably why we so we had some requirements early on about backwards compatibility and so on so um because you you don't know if you do if you if you do some fast reroute or something some other rerouting in the network you don't really know for sure yeah so and, and I, that that's why i would try to uh, uh delineate and separate their notion of supporting um ancillary data as a functionality from supporting particular indicators. Yeah. Yeah, no, I agree. Um, it looks like slightly different things. Yeah, <clears throat> maybe one quick comment uh, or question. So is this document is mainly about the requirements on the indicators, not about the ancillary data, right? It's about both, isn't it? Okay, but I see the requirements here are mainly about the indicators. Um, uh, well, we may, we, I, I could accept that we need more requirements, but I think it's to deal with both. We certainly need a requirement spec for both. Right, I agree. Just so, want some clarification more, about the scope more, of this document. You're more than welcome to submit additional requirements. We'd be delighted. Okay, and another question is, uh, how many type of indicators are we talking about here? I see, I see the hub by hub and uh, end to end. Are they? Uh, well, they are each of them. They're a class not specific uh, we're not there are a class of indicator rather than a specific number 
There's nothing in here that says how many indicators there might be. Yeah, I mean, uh, how many types of indicators, not uh, like how many indicators exist in the label stack? Uh, no, uh, so, 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 within the, 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 I'm not sure I'm quite, whether we're talking at cross purposes here. There are, there are N, where N is currently unknown, hop by hop indicators, and there are M, where M is currently unknown, end to end indicators. And all this document does is talk about the properties of of such indicators, not the quantity. I think okay. there might be, uh, GM might be referring to the fact that for the hop by hop indicators, you may actually split that into hop by hop indicators that must be processed. And if you don't know how to process that, y yes, you you're need, right. Yeah, yes, you need yes. to drop the packet. Yeah. Yes. So there's a must hub by hub, there's a should hub by hub. And the end to end is by definition must because if you don't do it, the bad stuff will get out into the wild. Yeah, and I also see the point to point and the point to multi point. Uh, bullet 18 mentions maybe one ADI may only support for point to point or point to multi point. This also make me a little confused about the uh, types of indicator we need to consider here. I think that depends on the application. Mm. So from the pro at a protocol level, then we have, need to have the concept of point to point and point to multi point, hop by hop, and uh, end to end. In, in each of the possible combinations. From a protocol point of view, it should be unlimited. However, uh, it's then up to the um, ADI and the ancillary data designers to specify the properties of their ADI and their ancillary data. But there should be no barrier to having point to multi point in the design. And point to point is taken as a given, of course. Does that answer your question, G? Yeah, I think that uh, helps. Again, Thanks. you're welcome to submit clarifying, um, clarifying text for consideration. Sure. So I have one other question. Uh, might belong in that this context. Do we have a case where we want to just one node on the LSP actually process the the the, the, the well, if, 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 if we yeah. did. If we did, then we'd have to either deal with this by splitting the LSP, or we'd have to deal with it by having an indicator inside the ancillary data that says who is to process it. So I think that would be part of the ancillary data design, wouldn't it? Um, maybe. I'm more asking about if we have a requirement to do. Yeah, you can imagine you might. You might, for example, if you're doing latency diagnostics, ask a particular node to say how long it kept the packet for. So do we need a sort of general requirement that says a mechanism may be needed to indicate a target node for the ancillary data? Yes, but um, I, I don't we then need the discussion about whether that is a protocol issue or whether it's an uh, a, um, a, an ancillary data issue? Well, it might be a protocol issue if the ADI is designed to target a particular node or there's some identifier in there. Well, that's the discussion we need to have. That's a deeper discussion we need to have, isn't it, as to whether we deal with this at ADI level. Yeah. Or whether we deal with this at um, um, ancillary data level or whether we deal with it at all. I mean, that's um, why I suggested May. 
Mm. I mean, in there now, we can always then have that discussion and then we can always take the requirement out later on if we so, decide to not requirement. So, one question so if the ADI, the hop and hop ac action uh, data, is uh, not mandatory, man mandatory to be processed by all nodes. You know, we embed that as part of this action data. Well, uh, then, then a policy can be on any node to say ignore it. So, so um, I mean, it all depends on how we go about doing it, right? I mean, a way of doing it, and it's only one way, is to have a an MPLS stack that gets you to a node. Yeah. Um, that pops off and discovers more MPLS. It continues through the set of sure. nodes doing the ADIs. So, so the so John. Yeah. What I was thinking is we probably on a per network action basis, we probably ought to specify whether that network action is required or optional. Yes. <laughs> That's also what I was yes. thinking. Yeah. Oh, okay. Well, in, in in that case, that will be part of the explicit definition of that ADI. Yes, of the yes, the network action is that's part of the definition of it. But but see, people were asking. Supposing I want to target a particular ADI, there are a number of way, a, a particular action at a particular node. There are that's a also a requirement, of... I believe. Okay, well, we should log that as a requirement. I don't think it's in here yet. Right. In other words, you, you, uh, the targeting you could be a hop by hop. You also have what I was calling select. Yeah, yeah, I agree. And there are there are a number of ways of doing select. Yeah. Correct. Yeah. Um, and I think it's our job to provide mechanisms where it could be implemented, but not necessarily to be prescriptive about what mechanism should be applied to a particular application. That's correct. But I mean, both of those, I think, are re requirements, you know, uh, required or optional and select. Yep. Okay. We'll, 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 we'll add a requirement in to deal with that. Okay. Or, or two requirements, depending on what looks best in the, the best description. <clears throat> So we're on 19, I think. 19. So 19, data plane mechanisms must be independent of the control plane type. Um, Everyone okay with that? Yeah. 20 then? So a mechanism must be defined. It might not be a mechanism. It might be more than one mechanism, but yes. it must be defined for control planes in use to determine the ability of downstream LSLs and LDRs to accept and process a given ADI. Now, I, 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 a word of caution is outside the scope of this document here. So um, when I was doing SFLs, people told me we need a mechanism for every for, you know, for a whole load of protocols, and no one ever defined any of them. So uh, we need to be careful how we write this so we don't stall the whole project on waiting for someone to design, design a BGP one and no one ever designing it, for example. So it must be... So do we want to, so, so are we being a bit over prescriptive here? Uh, and I know this was, you know, I'm co-author of this text when we say a mechanism must be defined for the control planes in use. Yeah, I think we're probably, we're not, I don't think we intend to say we have to do one for all of the list there. Um, uh, if it is optional ac action data, then why do you need to know? Uh, uh, yeah, that's, I mean, not the, that's not the, that's not the point of this, um, of this sentence, of this of this requirement, though. Okay. The point of this requirement is that I suppose if you need to know, you need to know. You 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 may need to know within the control plane method that you're, you're using. For example, BGP, RSVP, etc. Um, so we need to be careful that we write this. So sorry. Now, if I understand correctly, 
uh, we want to separate that you must know and from you may use control plane or other mechanisms to learn that. Yes. We need the must and, and you know, the, the way it's uh, a mechanism may be defined. I mean, why, why do we need the must? Um, my, it must be. I think what we. I think what we really need to say is it must be pos. It must, to the best of our engineering judgment, be possible to define a mechanism for each of the control planes. Okay. Uh, but 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 without uh, anyone on this call being signed up to actually write any of them, unless their day job needs them to. Do you follow where I'm going? So if I'm using RSVP, then RSVP must be able to uh, validate the action data. And if I'm using segment routing, uh, segment must. So are we are we saying must has to be for all of them? Oh, no, we're saying we're saying imagine we're saying that there must be. We're not saying that you have to use even if you're using RSVP, you don't have to use the extension that we defined in RSVP to do this. We're saying we need to define a mechanism for RSVP. If you want a mechanism for RSVP, if you right. Say. I, right. I think I think I think maybe we say, do we not mean it must be possible to define for each of the control planes, etc. In other words, there should be no showstopper to defining a mechanism for the protocol. Yes. If someone wants it. Okay. Following up on that, uh, it must be always possible uh, to extend the control planes uh, in use. So do we have to do an exhaustive visit of all the control plane signaling protocols and make sure that they, it is possible? You know, well, I think, I think that uh, you know, everyone on this call has got good enough engineering judgment to know that, at least for the ones we've listed, it would be possible. Yeah, yeah, it's just, okay. So there are no, I don't, I, I cannot conceive of a showstopper with any of the protocols we've listed. Or, or indeed how you could get one, but that's not quite the same as, um, or is this just a null requirement? Could we be silent on this? Yeah, I'm, I did sound as much as I can, but I'm finding it strong requirement by saying. Uh, maybe maybe it's not necessary because we already say all this stuff about the mechanisms required to enable LERs insert, you know, inserting LERs yeah. to determine the far end. So it's really just the same. I think we're just saying the same thing twice. Yeah. Honestly, we could probably just remove number twenty. Okay. I, you're not saying the same thing. I think that's a difficulty here. Say that again, please. You're not saying the same thing in 20 that you said earlier. Oh, it's it's different. Narrowing. Yeah. We're narrowing we're narrowing down, I suppose, the scope of what we said earlier. And maybe that's not really what we want to do. We want to leave it open how you how you do it. So yeah. we may end up with a control plane solution. We might not. So, um, my proposal is just to delete 20 for now, because it's perhaps going into a little bit too much <laughs> specifics about how to do it. And it doesn't stop anyone from writing a draft to say how to do it in RSVP or <laughs> ISIS or whatever. Um, Is that a reasonable? Yes. Okay, let's move forward.
Right. A mechanism is required to enable an LSR to determine if an ADI is present in a packet. I think that's obvious, is it not? This is the same discussion we had the other day. What, what, what is John? The, the, the presence of an ADI may we don't want to wander into design choices, that's all. Oh, I see what you mean. I see what you mean. If ADI is used, a mechanism must be provided. That's what you're saying. Right. Yeah. Yes. No, because this whole thing is about ADI requirements. <clears throat> I think the discussion earlier about was if it's MPLS, um, in the, if it's an in-stack, but um, if, if, I, if I'm a node that don't support the ADI, then why should, uh, I mean, I, I don't support the ADI. It should be passed through sometimes, right? Yeah, Seems but, like... but that's not what we're saying. Okay. It's not a notable requirement here. It's, there needs to be a, a mechanism. There needs to be a mechanism to alert a receiving LSR or LER that there is an ADI in the packet, which could be the structure of the ADI. But and yeah, it could be searching yeah. the whole could be searching the whole header for it. Yeah. Maybe it's obvious. an ADI which is unknown to me. Is that is that fine as well? No, that's not what we're talking about. We're talking about any you know, we're talking about um the ADI block, if you like. Ah, oh uh the okay, that's I'm fine with what you said now, but that's not what the sentence is saying, um, at least how I read it. The block I'm fine with, but there might be some an ADI there that I don't know about. Okay. Maybe that's me reading, misreading the sentence. I think, I think this is intended to say, or intend, maybe not specifically, but intended to describe, a, describe the fact that you need some kind of an alert mechanism alert mechanism such that um, an LSR or LER knows to pick out a particular packet and inspect the ADIs. And that mechanism could be just walk down the stack until you find the ADI block. Yeah, it could be that. Or it could be something else, but not our position to define it. Yeah, I mean, in the past, we've used other things like TTL expiry, for example. Yeah. Yep. Okay. But we need to standardize mechanism somehow. <coughs> Otherwise, I don't see the ideas. <coughs> I mean, we can change this to if ADI is relevant. If I was really ADI. just trying to say that the ancillary data must be identifiable. Yeah. Yeah, but that's the point of an ADI in a way. Um, uh, ADI is a specific mechanism. <laughs> the ancillary, there must be a way of identifying and delimiting the ancillary data and the network actions. Do we use AD only in the in the text? Uh, I, I can double check, but have we used AD? I, I see ADI a lot, but AD... Because the thing is that this is requirements on ADIs and ADs. Yeah, right. so what so... you're saying is I need to be able to uh, identify that AD is present, not ADI is present. Why is uh, that? You... you um... May need to be able to do both. Well, the ADI it tells you that the AD is present. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you do right. need to know if it is an ADI. Okay. Uh that's a different requirement though. Well but, um, is, isn't that this requirement then? Okay. Oh, the, there is another one for identifying AD. Okay. 
there's AD, right? The ABI is supposed to tell you there's AD. The, the point I made the other day is that, you know, the, the definition of the network action itself will tell you whether there is ancillary data and where it is. Maybe what we need is uh, maybe if I can suggest that we move this, we, we do make this requirement, a mechanism is required to enable an LSR to determine if ancillary data is present in the packet, and then we literally move it to requirement one, number one, or two. Because it's a basic thing. Right. Um, because obviously the ADI has to be defined has to be dis defined so that it causes this exception, if you like, at, a, at an LSR or LER to then go and look at the ancillary data. Yeah, I'm fine with the way you worded it, worded it uh, last, uh, Matthew. Okay. Mechanism to identify the ancillary data, right? Yeah. Which is the basic uh, requirement. Um, sorry, I'm just making notes. Right. <clears throat> okay, so number 22. <clears throat> I think this comes under the class of Many of the ones that we had earlier on, where if MPLS labels are used um, to indicate the ancillary data, then or in, or to encode the ancillary data, or to encode the ancillary data. Yeah. Yeah. So this is just a, a a good practice requirement. Don't sit, stick more labels in there than you need, and don't design it so it's hard to pass. Seems fair. Um, yeah, um, I would consider uh, splitting this uh, in two because uh, since uh, uh, it looks like we're using uh, two normatives, should and must not, and uh, they could be could be a split requirement. It could be split. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Thanks. Okay, so is that 22 done? So we're on 23. It's not just uh, labels, it's also data. Say again? Uh, on 22, maybe we should say must not add more data to the stack than necessary? Yeah. Uh, so there's a... So there's a bit of a difference between, to the stack. Oh, so the stack. Okay, yeah. At the moment, we don't add data to the stacks, though, do we? We would be... Or I suppose we do with the entropy label, but in general, we don't add data to the, to the stack. So...
Um, how about we say it must not expand the stack more than is absolutely necessary? Well, the stack contains labels. Yeah, yeah but it may, also con it may also contain ancillary data. Okay, yeah. All right. Oh. So if we say we must not expand the stack, that it covers all um, reasons for adding thing or stuff, junk, between the top of stack and the um, label with the S bit set. Sounds good. Okay. Um... Next one we may have to discuss. Yeah, we had a discussion last time on that. On yeah. 23. I see it fine that people have reservations. So are we on 24? So 24, we're keeping it. Uh, 23, we're keeping it, right? Say again? Uh, 23, yes. are we keeping the requirement? <clears throat> Uh, basically, are we going to create multiple stacks? And that, that is fine. I'm... Yeah, that, that's okay because that's a new stack. I okay. think if you take a given stack, um, that's fine. I mean, to make me clarify, maybe we can say ADIs, ADIs can only be inserted into a given global stack at, not, at LERs. Oh, do we mean they can only be? Um, inserted at stack creation time. Oh. Okay. What do which we? Will call... be which will be consistent with you must push a new stack. Certainly, ancillary data I think must only be pushed at stack creation time. Mm. Maybe uh, split too that out. Sorry. I think that's too restrictive. Do you, do, you, do you think we would actually take a stack apart, push some ancillary data in, and then replace the whole stack? You may not take the stack apart, but you may um, insert an ancillary data um, near the top of stack, because typically we don't want to do it at the top of stack, and then insert a couple more labels on it to direct. That's, yeah, that's kind of, that, that was like the carrier's carrier example, or, a, you know, um... So you, so you have an LSP that then gets forwarded over a, another LSP. Yeah. yeah. Um, and you want to insert some ancillary data, really, which is relevant to the the LSRs for the outer LSP. Right. Exactly. Yeah. Um, so you yes. So if the ancillary data is carried in stack then you can do it just by pushing some stuff on and making sure that it gets popped before it goes back to its old world again. Um, or if you want to do post stack data, I think you have to create a new label stack, don't you? Well, the thing, so the thing about the, the way we wrote this was that to me, uh, to me the, when we're talking about pushing the ancillary data in this, in this, in, in this outer LSP, it's the L it, this, we're talking about the LERs for the outer L the LER ingress LER for the outer LSP doing it. Yes. So it's still an LER. It's not. Mm. You may do an NSR function on the top label of the mm. inner LSP, but but it's still an LER that's doing this ADI insertion. But there is a must at the end, saying that you have to create a new stack. Uh, a new label stack must be pushed. I right. think what Elite is saying uh, additional, yeah, okay. It's not it's not removing the old one, it's and then putting a new one on it's it's pushing new labels on the outside. Right. The idea is if it is in stack data, and I think that's what uh, also Stewart was trying to hint is you don't need the new label stack if it is in stack uh, ancillary data. Right. So maybe we can add that text somehow. Uh, I think we need to go through all four all four cases and make sure that we correctly describe the behavior we want in all four cases. Is it four cases? There's, yeah, I think there's four cases. 
so I think we probably need to go through very carefully and pedantically through each of the possible things that may happen and make sure we correctly describe what the requirement is. And the overall requirement is that you don't hand a, 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 a stack or a, an ancillary data set to a node that can't do the right thing with it. Um, but some of that, I mean, to me, some of that is coming in a framework or architecture document. Yes. It's not really yes. like it's, it's like we need to progress that document a bit yeah. first to see. Yeah. Yeah. Where, where this is happening. Okay. So what we're going to do with this requirement? I think we can clarify it a bit. Yeah, so yeah. A new label stack must be pushed doesn't mean strip the old label stack and put a new label stack on the original packet. It means um, push some push some labels on the outside. Uh, you know, encapsulate yeah. the existing stack in some new labels. Yeah, with an S bit. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 Okay, so we're on 25, are we? 24. No, we, I think, have we just done 24 then? No, 23, we've just done. Oh, okay, beg your pardon. So this is just saying that if you're going to have ADIs, you, you, it must be possible to have more than one ADI. Do people agree with that? Yeah, I remember we talked about this. Seems a fair requirement. Can we move on to 25 then? One more one. Right, so what this is about saying is that we've got an LSP set up, and then we decide that we're going to actually use an ADI for the next packet that goes across that LSP. That's what we're intending to, to describe here. Everyone happy? Without re without uh, re re-establishing re re the uh, LSP. Okay. Um, I'm just trying to think whether that's or or or, or were we actually saying something? Oh, that's what we were saying. But I'm wondering if it's a bit solution specific, really. Yeah. Um. Because. We don't want to see what happens. There may be applications where it's perfectly reasonable to sort of operationally bounce an LSP today. Yeah, I mean, so think about VPNs. You um, you wouldn't have an LSP running and then decide to make it a, a um, well, I suppose you might decide to add VPN behavior to it, but then you'd signal a new label stack, wouldn't you? For OAM purposes, the NC to mm -hmm. OAM, I wouldn't expect, uh, right. you know, it will cause mm -hmm. any uh, uh, the effect on the traffic. Um, yeah. But I don't think you, you're leaving it lenient in 25, right? You, you don't want to define what happens, which is fine. Yeah. We just say we, we can't, we must be able to insert a new ADI. Okay, the fact of that we don't want to be fine. Okay. Okay. Everybody okay with that? Can you repeat, Tarek? Yeah, my question was on 25, the, they define the ability to insert new ADIs, but the impact of inserting the new ADI is not defined. It might mean uh, re-establishing the LSP or not? It's lenient, flexible. Yeah. Um, it says that, yeah. I mean, it should be possible to do it without re-establishing the LSP. The way we usually work is that we establish an LSP, then we put a VPN on it or a pseudo wire or whatever, 
and then we might come across a pseudo excuse me a pseudo wire where we need to measure the latency or something um and it would be unpleasant to have to reestablish that as we which might also have effects on all the other uh, applications using this LSP. It would also be not a very scale scalable thing that I have to establish a new LSP to do this. Um, so it should be, I think you should be able to add ADI to an existing LSP with no impact. Yeah. I mean, really, in that case, you're almost adding the ADI to the VPN. Matthew? Yep. Um, it occurs to me, I mean, at any point in time, we're going to have a defined set of network actions. And I think what you want to be able to say is that a given packet can have, each, each packet can have a different set of network actions specified. This is this sort of is following up on what Karidi was saying earlier, which is you may want to do specific measurements only at certain times and not all the time. Yeah. That's correct. Yeah, I agree. Um, we didn't use that terminology network actions in this draft, though. Um, that's fine. That's just my my little thing. <clears throat> um, so I think this captures it then, doesn't it? So I think the one thing to add is that it must be possible to insert new ADLs for new applications um, on an established LSP with no impact on existing um, applications. Right. Agree. Okay. I mean, it's similar to if you if you think of uh, a VPN label. I have an uh, RSVP label established. I then decide to use it for VPNs, so I push this extra label. It has no effect on the RSVP LSP. It doesn't have to be resignaled. I don't, I mean, any existing VPNs using this same uh, label or this same LSP are fine. So from that point of view, you're just pushing something more onto the, uh, onto the LSP and you know, things should not break because of that. Yeah. Hey, guys, I have to drop, but yeah, you guys continue. Okay, so 26. Hopefully that's a given. We don't have to put an ADI on every packet. I'm okay with that. Yep. <clears throat> um, Twenty seven, I think we kind of already discussed by by proxy already, which is it must be possible to process a subset of the ADIs. Yes. Yeah. Um, I think that this may need to be modified based upon the discussion about optional versus required. Yes. It's only. Did every did you get what John said? Yeah, John is 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 is, is referring us back to the optional um, um, processing of, of yeah versus Optim compulsory versus processing. required. Okay, okay, yeah, maybe my connection bad then. Uh, and indeed, it is exactly that requirement. Okay, so 28. So 20, 29, we should take as a pair. Or 28, 29, and 30. So all know that you, yes, how, can yes, you, yes. Yeah, how can you really specify the fast path versus slow path? So I don't know whether we mean fast path or slow path, but um, in some cases, you must complete processing of this stuff before before the packet is sent as an integral part of sending the packet. And in other cases, it's satisfactory to just make a note of it and process it at some time of your convenience. It's very uh, application specific, isn't it? Yes. 
So I think it's just saying that the set of solutions for this is going to have to support applications that require password processing and some that, re that are okay with SOPATH. We lost some packets, but I think he was saying synchronous versus asynchronous processing of the data. I don't know if that's <laughs> synchronous. Though, has, uh, yeah, synchronous has has connotations with um, um, <clears throat> other connotations. So I don't. I'm not sure the term synchronous are, is. Are right. we saying that there is a bit, or the action will define is it slope path or action or um, or, or past path action? Like, is it part of the definition of the action to say it's a slow path or? Um... No, I, I, we're using Which a shorthand for something more. John? John, John? I mean, this was the distinction we had in the precision time protocol stuff. In other words, you, you generate an, a subsequent message later. <clears throat> exactly. So, so Fast path and slow path are implementation so, bits that shouldn't be in the spec. That's exactly my point. Yeah, yeah. So we need best, we definitely need better terminology for this. This is just what we came up with for this. But um, uh... so, um, I, I, yes, I think we were being cavalier with our language. I think there are a number of cases, and we need to to to, to deal with them. There is. You need to process this stuff before you can even figure out what the destination is. You, there's the you need to process this stuff before the packet leaves the the router. And there's the uh, we don't care when you process this packet. Just send the packet on its way and make sure you've got enough context to deal with the request at your leisure. Then you should be using language like that. Indeed, I think we do need to change the language away from. Fast path, slow path, which was a, a rather, on my part, slack way of saying um, what we need to specify in what requirements twenty eight to thirty. Yeah, I mean the thing is we've had similar requirements in the past for various things, but they always use different terms like yes, data plane or control plane processing of a packet or mm. inline versus. But I, I think maybe we should say I think that taxonomy i had just now is probably what we really meant isn't it which is must you know this before you can send it out must you have dealt with it before you do send it out and um can you process it at your le at your relative leisure because this is probably quite a bit of Offline talk. Should we? Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, should we should kind of come up with a proposal? Yeah, right. I think that's probably the right thing to do. Should we jump to 31 then? I think so. And then we should, but we, we should make a note that we will make a proposal for this text. Um, before we produce the next version. Yeah. Or we will note in the next version that this this is an unresolved issue. Okay. Um, Thirty one is all about don't stick the stuff so far away that um, n that no one can process it, or at least don't stick it so far away that the things that must process it. Can't process. Yeah, didn't we have something similar like earlier on? Yeah, we did. And of course, segment routing is full of this stuff. Yeah. So one small net on 31, uh, as close to the top of the label stack, right? That's what you mean? The top is yes. not. Okay. Can we. Add no, that? this is the ancillary data. So it could be below the label stack. But what we were trying to say here was that it shouldn't be off off in the weeds somewhere in the. In, in the um, so let, let's say uh, you shouldn't sort of stick it on the end of the of, of, of the user data. You should so you have to pass all the way through the user data. You should stick it as close to the bottom of the what? label stack, or as close to the label stack. Yeah, as, 
just as close to the label stack. It doesn't. It's not top, necessarily top, because you get ancillary data that's below the. Below the stack. Is the correct? Is the correct term it's close to the front of the packet? Ah, so you generalize that that, that. that finesses both problems. Yeah. Yeah, I, I want both cases to be covered. I, I just want to. Yeah. Make... Well, that's close to the front of the packet would do that, but maybe we need a bit more text in there. Um, maybe we need some sort of. Maybe we need to stick a segment routing reference in so that people understand the pain that this can cause. Well, that's just. One. That's just big label stacks, but this yeah. is, um, this isn't wasn't really about necessarily big label stacks. This was about finding the ancillary data without having to walk through all of the stuff in the payload. Well, I mean, there is an example. You know, I suppose yeah. I was going to say I'm thinking of the example of trying trying to do ECMP in segment routing when you've got a huge label stack to get to the bottom of in order to find the five tuple. Yeah, but that we've still got. I think we've still got something about mm. top of label stack earlier on. It, this, this I thought was to find the ancillary data, not the. Yes, yes, it is. Um, so we're not trying to say stick the ancillary data at the top, you know, close to the top of stack. I don't know if that necessarily makes sense because it could be contained in something. Mm. Well, even if it's uh, outside the stack, you you still want it close to the top. Right. That's, That's close. Uh, yes. Exactly. Even if it's below the, the, yeah. the bottom of the stack, it's got to be. Yeah, I mean that's what I mean. You can put the top and still promote both cases. Okay. Are we on thirty-two now? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Are we curious about this? Are we going to actually sign our data? Well, we, well, one thing we are serious about is getting through security review. Must. Why use must here? Well, it doesn't say a solution must be deployed. It says, I think it must one that must be provided. And if you recall, one of the big arguments around in situ was signing it. I don't think I'm passing with this. My, my fear is that we don't have some text around this. We're going to fall as soon as the security area sees it. Um, okay. Um, it has never been secure. Um, you, you pointed to um, uh, IOM example. So, yeah. Um, um, do you think that uh, we want to have uh, a general? authentication mechanism for uh, ancillary data or ancillary data should have each type of ancillary data should have an option of uh, authentication. Uh, either of those would, would comply with requirement 32, but some we trumped on someone. Someone said something else. Okay. Uh, I suggested that the data plane is not secure and never has been. And therefore, you know, that's the kind of. A false requirement. Oh, the MPLS data plane, you mean? Uh, even IPv6, if I analogy, Stuart, they're not uh, forcing that hop by hop, for example, options need to be authenticated. You know? Right. Uh, even SRV6, you know, these segments. Uh, um. Well, uh, SRH has uh, optional TOV for yep. authentication, and uh, then uh, there is authentication extension header for uh, IPv6. 
Okay, you proved me wrong. Oh, great, thanks. So, Tony, how, how do you think we, 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 I don't think we're going to get this through security review, particularly with the amount of sort of cyber attacks that happen these days without su saying something or other, even if it's not compulsory. Have you got any suggestion as to, as to how we might address that? That's a genuine question. This creates no new security issues. Well, I suppose that's true. <laughs> We can certainly say it's uh, that it creates no security issues that don't already exist in MPLS. Well, we can leave it out and face it if we get the security comment. But I do anticipate getting one. We could just soften it. Yeah. And just say a solution may be needed to verify that. Yeah. yeah. I'm pro, you know, not, yeah, softening. Just do that for now and then. Yeah. But you understand where I'm coming from that, yeah, you know, the, there's a sort of a fight between us and the security people all the time about this sort of thing. So are we okay if we leave it uh, to me, and then if uh, security raises the concern, we will promote it to a more stronger language? I think we say maybe needed. Yeah. So we're on thirty-three now, I believe. Yeah. Oh, okay. Isn't and this is exactly the same. Um, um, this is from exactly the same camp that yeah. I read enough security reviews to know that they're going to put a question on us if we don't say anything. I mean, it's really saying don't expose confidential confidential information from the payload. Right. So don't take data from the payload and stick it clear in the ancillary data that the LSRs are going to read. Well, or or other random stuff that's lying around in the LSR that you might not want to export to the world. Yeah. Well, I think this is a bit. Um, I don't think this is an onerous requirement as such. Are we okay with it? Yeah. So thirty-four then. I'm okay as well. Yep. It's actually, 34 is probably true, but on the other hand, uh, but it, it's hard to kind of enforce if it depends on what the what route, what the LSRs are hashing on. Mm. Well, uh, yeah. I mean, entropy label is the standard, right? Yeah. They're using something else. Then I have a question about um, the use case for modifies ADI. So if we um, allow only imposition and disposition of ADIs, what the modification is? Well, supposing supposing you decide to set an ADI bit. For example, Kariti's famous uh, no fast reroute bit, that shouldn't affect the um, ECMP characteristic. But that would be, uh, that will require imposition of ADIs. Well, could you have an ADI that has this bit in it, which is currently state clear, which gets set as the packet passes through the network. I think uh, you could, wouldn't you? Yeah. Actually, I haven't thought about this as an option. So I was saying that a transit node, LSR, can modify imposed ADIs at will? Yes. 
Oh, certainly for and I, and no fast reroutes, you would have to be able to have that effect, wouldn't you? Um, you'd either have to push a whole new ADI, ADI indicator set, or you'd have to change it within a set that had already been declared in the packet. Uh, my, my understanding was, well, again, it's my interpretation, mm -hmm. that uh, only LER that imposing ADIs can set the values. So, well, that's uh, an interesting... There's an interesting question here because that then establishes a design uh, in, in a particular sort of case, um, which may or may not, you know, which is not really our intent at this stage. Um, but we do have an existing sort of proposed application of ADI, which is to say no, FFR, no FRR. Uh, uh, Stewart and Greg, uh, the, there is a hop by, there is a requirement for MPLS to do in C to OAM hop by hop, and in that case, the OAM data in the packet can change every time the packet. That's also true. Yeah. Okay. And, uh, and well, no, yeah. and uh, I think what the requirement is saying that ECMP should not be impacted by this change done by every node. And okay. um, I, applicability yeah. of uh, in IOM uh, to MPLS, it, it's uh, in my opinion, is very different topic. And uh, if we consider uh, their hub by hub MPLS, then um, for MPLS, I would say that we should not uh, use a trace option hub by hub. Uh, because uh, IOM can do um, direct export or other um, out-of-band collection of telemetry information. So uh, I, I don't think that we want to allow uh, in situ data to be added in the stack. Not in, uh, well, we need uh, transit LSR to modify that data. Like meaning, for example, to timestamp, add an add an additional timestamp. No, but again, Tarek, uh, again, uh, I believe that uh, there is no uh, requirement to support all options to find in um, IOM data. So all uh, IOM trace mechanisms for MPLS applicability of IOM to MPLS uh, network. We can clearly uh, define what mechanisms are applicable to MPLS domain. That's a different discussion. I, I think that's a fair point, Greg. But I, when we started the project, uh, the use cases we wanted to cover included IOEM end to end and hop by hop. Now, if we, think, I think we need to, you know, if you're taking us back to the discussion no, of use cases, uh, not, different. Tarek, I, I'm not saying that uh, we do not allow. I am hub by hub, but what I'm saying is that I am has uh, defined several trace options. So how um, I am data collected. And... Hang on a second. Let's just go back to this requirement itself, which is what we were originally discussing. I think that's um, that makes no implication that you will. Um, be changing ADIs anywhere. It's just saying that, that if you had a solution that did, it mustn't affect the ECMP behavior. But again, um, I, I think would you want the ECMP changing, AD, changing ADIs, uh, changing indicators uh, without signing who changed it, uh, it, it might be operational nightmare to debug. Uh, to find so out AD. I, oh, yeah, yeah, I think we need to clarify. Uh, we are changing the AD, not the ADI. But it's this requirement, as I interpret it, it talks about ADI explicitly. Indeed. Oh, I, I raised that already that uh, sometimes we're, we're interchanging ADI with AD. Um, if you, you think that this should be AD, rather? Well, yeah. certainly it's true that if you change the ADI, you mustn't affect the UCMP behavior. Okay. We, but not the, the, the any solution that modifies the AD, I think, should only have a, an entirely predicted effect on the ECMP behavior. 
in fact you could you could just say um, um, I suppose you could say predictable in both cases actually but but again uh, I, I'm less concerned with ad but I'm still uh, want us to get to more uh, specific use cases when uh, ad uh, must be changed in hop by hop operation. We haven't said AD here, and, and AD will change. We know there are many applications that would change the AD as it goes through. Yeah. Um, You're talking about uh, OAM applications. Um, some of the applications for doing latency control would definitely change the AD. For example, by saying what the dwell time is or what the uh, allowable um, uh, lifetime of the packet has become now. Yeah, uh, that that's possible, but... I am very concerned that it, well, if it was meant to be AD, not ADI, uh, that's okay. We meant, we meant, I believe, ADI here. We need a separate discussion about AD. Yeah, but I would want us to discuss whether we allow the transit node to modify ADI. I think there is an expectation that we can uh, from one of the very first applications put on the table by Kariti. Okay, Kariti is not here, so. Um... Kariti wanted to put no further fast reroute. Yeah, but uh, I, w I was imagining that that would require implication uh, of uh, imposition of a new set of uh, ADIs. Not necessarily. I, I, no, I understand it's possible, but the problem um, I think uh, could be is that what happens if um, some node changes something that it's not supposed to change? So- Well, I think how, in MPLS how, you're in trouble anyway, aren't you? Yeah, but how do you <laughs> I, how do I, I don't think- I don't think we should, we should cover that here. Yeah. That's that's like non-standard behavior. We're talking yeah. here about you don't design a solution in a way that if you have a solution that you that we standardize that requires modifying the ADI, it shouldn't affect DCMP behavior. Correct. It's just talking about a standardized solution here and not and, and that's only if you do, we standardize a solution like that. It's not saying whether or not we should standardize a solution that modifies an ADI. I think then you, you, I mean, maybe we need another requirement that clarifies that, but. Okay, are we comfortable to stop at uh, this time or? I, I, I mean, I think that the security change is, um, pretty much a given isn't it that individual solutions are responsible for their own security requirements is what we're saying we just changed the um yeah. change the 2119 language there and i think that's the last substantive change apart from yeah i think that's the last substantive change yeah I'm okay All right. With, uh... so... Okay, go ahead. So I think we are we good to close this. Um, Matthew and I will do a best effort to get a new version out. It won't be for Thursday. Okay. Yeah. So we won't have you on the agenda for Thursday. That's how no, I, yeah, I think to... it's very unfair to put us back on the agenda for Thursday. Okay. And. Any there's final... anything in here, there's anything in here that people particularly want to pull out and discuss with the whole group? Yeah, we'll get to know but about I that. Okay. I, I was, I, I just, I don't think there's going to be version two by Thursday is what I think I was saying. Okay, um, I do have to go to another meeting as well. So let yeah. me ask Lo, any closing um, reminders or anything you want to mention before we close off the meeting? Uh, and I can stop the recording now. No? Okay, I'm stopping the.